everybody. Hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jesse and I am the host here on this channel. If you are interested in subject matter pertaining to and surrounding things about uh, Norse mythology, Norse specifically Norse heathenry, Germanic paganism, what is quite often modern day referred to as also true, um, invite you to please write down here, subscribe to the channel. It costs you absolutely nothing. If you don't like it, that's fine, move on. But if you do, I appreciate the subscription. And then if you want to be notified every time I upload new content, clicking that bell notification will get you in the know, right? You'll be notified every time I upload new stuff. So if you don't mind doing those two things before we go any further, I would greatly appreciate it. It helps support this channel, helps uh, build the channel's growth. All that kind of fun stuff and we're all here on lockdown right we're in this uh global pandemic uh the covid 19 thing we'll see if youtube likes that i just said that but anyway <laughs> you are uh you are here now and i appreciate you guys watching so while you're here check the description down below for ways that you can help support midgard musings through your patreon subscriptions or support uh, there's merchandise that you can buy through teespring redbubble uh donations through paypal are always and encouraged and appreciated uh, first and foremost, take care of yours and your own, okay? Take care of you and yours, first and foremost, right? Um, and then check out everything else down in the description below, see if it fits you. Alright, so today's video is going to be a continuation in uh, a recent series that I'm running. If you guys have checked out any of my previous videos, some of which are going to be annotated up here in uh, cards, as well as shared at the end of the video in end screen stuff, so check all that out. But this is a continuation of the uh, discussion or examination, if you will, of the parts of self as perceived amongst a lot of heathens nowadays, but more importantly, the way the self, the parts of self were perceived by our ancient ancestors, our Norse and Germanic ancestors who followed this path that we are trying to relive or recreate or, or revitalize, if you will, in modern times and today's video I'm very excited about is going to be on the part of self called the philia okay that word's going to be right up here for you guys to check out okay and the word is philia uh, the plural for that is figure so multiple is figure and singular is philia and it is English or there it is it is a cognitive word or has its English cognate of fetch so you may hear uh, those two terms or those two words sort of interchangeably used, but it means essentially the same thing. So we're going to get into talking about that part of the self called the philia. Really excited about it. Um, and I've got some notes here that I'm going to be reading from, so you'll excuse me as I look down or as I look around, wherever the notes may be. Um, that's where I'm drawing my stuff from. So um, first and foremost, uh, the term philia, um, is quite often described as quote unquote a spiritual guardian. Uh, sort of like this guardian spirit that is bound to an individual and specifically bound to a family um, or a family line. So it has a lot to do with your ancestry. Um, and it is said to accompany a person throughout their life. Um, some of the, in, some of the uh, European folklore uh, that you may read about or see in especially modern times you may hear about like a fetch um, or a familiar um, is another word that you may see used uh, interchangeably with this part of the self uh, especially in the neo-pagan circles uh, you see or hear a lot of the term used uh, familiar um, where the uh, the witch or the individual will have an animal that is considered their their spiritual guide um, they're familiar, so quite often referred to or looked at as uh, in feline form or bird form or any other various animal, but those are some of the more popular ones um, that you'll see quite often in folklore, and that is uh, the, the uh, I guess you could call it the, uh, hmm, losing the word here, but the, 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 the similar word for fetch or familiar is going to be philia, and that, and that animal spirit, that animal guardian essence, right, uh, would be what the Norse would consider uh, that part of the self, okay? Uh, so, philia, philia, translates to follower, or one who follows, or one who accompanies, okay? Um, and 
there are many times in, uh, throughout the lore that we see uh, examples of this part of the self as being depicted as a uh, figure that travels ahead of uh, its owner. So it's not kind of like following you from the back or, or, or following you as you go, but accompanying you would probably be a more accurate term. Um, is that it's with you, and that it quite often will go ahead of you, um, beyond you even, to reach the intended destination before you yourself would arrive or get there. Um, we see, and, and, and quite often we'll see this figure, this part of the self appearing in dream form, um, where, uh, in, in a subconscious sort of state, where this part of the self can be sent out to, to travel, even to travel in the, throughout the realms and spirit sense. We're going to get into that part of the thing here in just a little bit, but um, it is definitely and quite often and most commonly and most popularly referred or seen as an animalistic form. Um, there, there, there's definitely that connection with that part of the self as it being represented in animal form. Um, so there's that. Um, the the figia is also a part of um, one's physical life, right? Um, it can live on after the physical part of us is dead and gone. Uh, the filia can live on and be uh, made manifest uh, in a very um, tangible way. Uh, sometimes the filia is not visible to just everybody and anybody. Sometimes that, 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 that's that part of the self, that part of uh, one's uh, self would only be visible to those who have a little bit of added sight uh, of spirituality, the, the, those who have that sensitivity to seeing those things. So quite often it's not just quite so easily seen or, or, or represented in, uh, in physical form, but it does have the ability to exist and live beyond the physical life of its owner. All right. Um, and it can be, like I said before, it can be sent out to, to travel the realms, um, as, as you probably have seen already in the annotated cards and what you may see in the end screen, uh, one of the parts of self that we talked about, one of the very first parts of self that we talked about was the Homer. Now Homer is that, that perceived part of self, that perceived or, or the, the, the part of yourself that other people uh, maybe don't know you very well or, or, or that the, the part of yourself that you want people to see. Uh, the, the, the filia is this animalistic form potentially uh, or, or can take on animalistic form that is that is sent out to travel the realms uh, for, for spiritual journeys and, and ways and that that is the part of yourself that can be uh, perceived or seen by others in other parts as being something who is not you right so my filia uh, whatever it might be which I'll get into an interesting story um, here in just a little bit about my own personal idea of that um, is that uh, you know they, they may not see you as a person they may not see me in my physical you know in my form or visage but it would be in an animal form but that is still me it's still a part of me right um, so the philia I think is an interesting uh, part of the Homer um, sort of a sub part of the Homer that, that that is sent out to travel the realms perhaps a little bit easily easier or you can travel the realms more easily in, in animal form because of the just natural animalistic aspects of that part of the self. Um, and, it, and it might give you that, that, that ease of traversing the realms um, on your shamanistic and, and spiritual journeys. Now, one interesting thing to point out is historically, if you want to call it historically, or at least in, 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 in some of the documented texts um, that we have, is that you know, we see that, that, that a person's philia, the, the, the one's filia is always around, okay? It's not that it's here here one day, gone the next, or whatever. It's always around, um, but that it's ordinarily seen and um, recognized only by those that have some sort of, like, astral vision, like I mentioned earlier, some souls that have that added gift of, of spiritual sight. Um, however, all the references in the saga, one, thing, one interesting thing to point out is that all the references that we see about this form of the self being made manifest in the sagas, at least, are that they are in female form. Um, there are female filiar attached 
to to men, or or it, it's usually like an opposite sex sort of thing. Like you have female filiar that are attached to to male figures, and then you have male filiar attached uh, to female figures, which is an interesting uh, thing. It's not clear whether that spirit is always um, evident or, or appearing as a member of of the opposite sex per se, but it's it's kind of a common theme that we see. Um, I guess we in, in some of the Eddie poems. Um, there's a, there's a protecting role um, uh, of the filiar that, that exists um, to sort of guide but also protect. Um, and that part of the thing, in some of the Eddic poems at least, we see that that form, that filiar form, taken on by this uh, sort of Valkyrie uh, figure um, who is a sort of human, supernatural, female uh, woman skilled in battle. We read about the Valkyrie, uh, the Valkyria, uh, being the choosers of the slain, so there's this very um, strong essence, strong female essence um, tied to to Filiar as well. Um, but uh, it, it, it's an interesting thing to note, and then the one thing that I wanted to add to this, my own personal thing about it, um, when it comes to this uh, concept of the Filiar, right? Um, it's not a very uncommon thing to see in not just Norse culture, not just Germanic culture, but in other cultures of the world, um, to have a sort of animal guide, right? We see in Native American cultures, we see it in Eastern uh, Asian uh, spirituality, we see a lot of various things that um, sort of suggest the fact that people will have animal spirit guides um, to represent uh, their, 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 either their family or, or something. It, it just depends on the culture. And I personally had um, a time in my life where I was uh, very young. I was I was probably in my adolescence and, and, and teenage years mostly, where I was learning an Eastern style of martial arts. And the person who I was studying under, um, it was a Chinese internal martial art. And um, the person who I was studying under um, was very keen on his students. Um, various styles, the various ways that we acted and behaved, and he gave us each our own sort of animal totem, spirit animal, whatever you want to call them, um, in that aspect of it, even though what we were doing was was a combat-driven thing, it wasn't a spirituality-driven thing, but there were some things that meshed and worked in together. So to add to that, um, during my time, during my studies under this individual, he gave me and, and, and told me that my spirit animal, right, my, my animal, was the fox. Um, it's not something that I would have come up with. It's not something that I would have said. But he's like, you're sly like a fox. You, you, when, when we get into our sparring matches, when we get into our various combat modes and stuff, he's like, you are not skilled. Um, <laughs> you don't have the years of, of, of skill tied to you, but you have the slyness to get out of things. And he's like, you, you're sly like a fox. Um, so is my filia a fox? I don't know. Um, if you guys are out here and you're watching my videos and you see a fox one day, is that me traveling around in the realms? I don't know. Um, but that is something that I have taken with me throughout my whole life and it might be something that I consider uh, in my own spiritual journeys when I'm traveling, when I'm doing my shamanistic work, when I'm traveling the realms, not to force something out of myself but to work with something that has, was naturally and organically grown. So. I love this point, this part of the the part of the self, uh, the philia, the animal, you know, connecting with nature, the whole part of ourselves that we that that don't die when our physical self dies. There's parts of ourselves that go various places, but the philia can quite often be recognized and be felt by others. I I, for, I am for sure a, a a believer that our ancestors are with us in more ways that we can quite often tangibly see. But when we see a bird, when we see an animal, when we see something from the natural realms make themselves manifest to us and it reminds us of that departed loved one. I firmly believe that that is that philia, that there's philia attached to our ancestral line who is watching us, who is following us, who is guiding us, who is being there with us throughout our physical form, throughout our physical journeys of life. So. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments what you thought of it. 
All right. Uh, the next one, the final video in this series is going to be about the Hamingya, which I'm very excited about as well. So stay tuned next week for that. In the meantime, thank you so much for your support. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hail. Thank you all for your support. And I will see you in next week's video.